We faced an enormous crisis a generation ago, early 1950s, 1960s, and for a reason. It was the first shift in the, ulti in the fundamental strategy of agriculture that had occurred in 10,000 years. Agriculture, because it's catastrophic, must constantly have new land. It must constantly new have new land because it also creates excess population and those people need a place to go. So from the beginning of domestication of wheat 10,000 years ago in the Middle East, in what is now Iraq, on, ironically enough, to about 1960, agriculture had a single strategy, which was it compensated for its weaknesses by taking new land. In 1960, we ran out of new land. Period. There was no more, essentially. And we've, yes, we've colonized some new line, land since 1960, but we've lost an equal amount of things like salinization, loss of water. So basically, our arable land base, our farmable land base, is the same as it was today as in 1960. At the same time, we were faced with a period of enormous population growth. We were at 3 billion people then. And a lot of real smart people were looking at those numbers and saying, we're going to see famine within our lifetime, massive, widespread, die-off famine. Paul Ehrlich, the biologist, was among those people and probably the most famous of the people to do that. And his predictions never came to pass. And it's not because his numbers were wrong, they were right. Well, what he didn't understand at the time was a revolution that was brewing in the background. It was called the Green Revolution. A fellow named Norman Borlaug, financed by Rockefeller Foundation money, was learning a trick that created a new strategy for agriculture. And while we call it the Green Revolution and call it pesticides and fertilizer and a number of other things, it was something quite simple, much simpler than all those things. It was short plants. By dwarfing both wheat and rice, he was able to create a plant that increased its harvest index, that is its primary productivity. More of that productivity was dedicated to seed as opposed to leaves and stem. But also because of that short architecture, they were able to hype that plant with chemical fertilizers and water so it would support a heavier seed head. The result was a tripling of production, at least a tripling of production, of both rice and wheat. As a result of that, something like 75% of human nutrition today is covered by corn, wheat, and rice, three grains. The ultimate result of that was we were able to increase human population, support that extra population, plus ramp it up further. So, in my lifetime, human population has doubled from three to six billion people. The hidden fact in all of that was that all of that increased production depended not just on short plants, but on energy, fossil fuels. Because the chemical fertilizers that took advantage of that short plant architecture come from natural gas. It convert, it's a straight off conversion, natural gas, into fertilizer. But at the same time, we're using enormous amounts of energy to plow that, the field with tractors to process the food because grain can be eaten straight up. You can't go out and eat a piece of grain like you can a green bean or a tomato. It must be processed in some way, it must be cooked, and to transport that energy because we have a globalized, centralized system then there must be an enormous amount of transport. As a result of that, all that is that if we take a look at about 1940 and an American farmer, that farmer was using roughly a calorie of fossil fuel to make a calorie of food. Today, that same farmer uses something like 10 calories of fossil fuel to make a calorie of food. That means that petrochemicals, fossil fuel, have become embedded in our food supply. We put off the catastrophe that occurred a generation ago with fossil fuels. In other words, we didn't colonize new farmlands, we colonized new oil fields and new watersheds to make irrigation water. If we run out of fossil fuel, that strategy will collapse in a heartbeat. And we will be at exactly the position we were a generation ago 
When we had three billion people we couldn't feed, only now we have six billion people, exactly double the number.